Ooh, this place looks a bit different with that silver play button. I guess it's time for Garbro to do another video for Neckberia. Today it's going to be Ooh. Player's Thread off TG. 2014-2015 High School Games Club. There's like six of us. Everybody is cool. Come graduation, four of us left. Decide f*** it. Advertise the club. Come fall, we have like 15 incoming freshmen join. With even more in spring once football season is over. Leaders decide to split the club into like four different groups in the same game world. Get put into group of two cool dudes, a f***ing weeb, and the subject of the story. Party consists of Oracle, me, fighter, investigator, brawler, and a cleric. Too long didn't read of campaign up to that point as us doing job board requests for Frontier Town as part of a guild. Eventually sent to Graveyard to check out what's been making noise after dark. Ghouls led by Skeletal Champion. Combat ensues. We start getting our shit kicked. The investigator the worst of us by far. Cleric tells him to swing by for a heal. Good idea. Wife. Investigator does so. Cleric's turn rolls around. I'll only heal you if you pay me first. Ten gold pieces. Players argue out of game. Eventually come to an agreement that he'll get his money after combat. Cleric turns and attacks nearby enemy. Stun silence. Og. Skeletal champion walks up and Chris investigator beheading and kill <laughs> beheading and killing him. Game stops as everybody except the weeb calls the cleric's player a fucking asshole. We resume and eventually barely win the combat. Investigator's player rolls up the next week with a paladin. Paladin is cool and heals everybody for free, except the cleric. Some more shit happens later and I end up being a GM stars without number with the other cool guy the next year. Never have to deal with Weeb or asshole again. Weeb was just a bad player but nothing to the level of that. He never wrote down, he never read anything, and he was very obviously trying to turn his character into Broly or something. We found out a few sessions after this incident that he was wearing armor he didn't have proficiency with, and run out of the combat spouting about how he was sorry for the dishonor or some shit. The cool dudes eventually ended up using him as a guinea pig for a fake star stone which ended up killing him pretty much instantly. I should also mention that during the semester with 15 people, the party ended up tying him up in rope and leaving him in the desert because he wouldn't shut the f*** up about being the son of a god. Hmm. Have a good childhood friend. He's a good 7 out of 10 GM, does awesome campaigns, but pushes his GM PCs on us, which we tell the f*** off every time. Fucking does the same edgy, nothing personnel kid character every time he's not the GM. And he still wonders why he is forever DM, even if there are better GMs at the table. <laughs> One player comes forward with a boring and shit plan. Literally, let's just murder Hobo as a plan. If we go with it, he leaves it up to us to fix it when it inevitably goes wrong. If we don't go with it and come out with a more fun plan, he sulks and acts all passive aggressive the whole session. Whenever he's left up to his own devices, all he wants to do is murder random people, no matter how fucked it would get the party. Often does a, I attack this guy, roll dice, and then haha JK not actually doing that at random moments. Sometimes p some players just need a good slap. You know what I'm saying? Just a good open palm just slap. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. <laughs> and honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below and just just look at this lizard lady with titties. She got big titties. <laughs> look at the titties! <laughs> I see something similar in my group, but a little different. Childhood friend. Great DM. However, he always insists on us having a DMPC around. DMPC always has some connection to some distant lineage of kings or nobility. 
This wouldn't be too bad except he keeps trying to shoehorn his DMPC's quest to restore his family's titles slash holdings and go on campaigns to win glory for himself. Even in the end game of a campaign that has nothing to do with his DMPC's goals. Meanwhile, the characters he plays in a campaign are always mysterious rogues with a distant plot, revelant connection to some ancient noble house slash mystical line of kings. Basically the same character as his DMPCs, but usually the DM will accommodate his wish to restore his ancestral titles. His characters and DMPCs are total assholes, fucking over the party by stealing, killing, or betraying us all the time due to some shady mystical family bullshit and to further his own goals at our expense. But why? Why? <laughs> why have that shit in there in the first place? I don't get it. 2000. Gaming group of 20-somethings. Got together through local game store. Most people are nice and like to work together. Except one guy. Pot dealer. An anarchist. Jobless. Cringe lord. Tries to do- <laughs> Tries to always do something fucked up in the game. Get into a VTM game. Storyteller is a storyteller is a literal Jew and very proud of it. Anarchist party way, what the f anarchist party way is in? Anarchist party way in is irked by storyteller. So as a joke, gets a World War II German helmet from the army surplus store. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just randomly in the game store, whips out the helmet and word for word in German recites the blood and iron speech. Everyone in stunned silence. He said it so loud the store quieted down because of this. Not the end of his antics. It's so long ago I don't remember the lesser antics besides cringing up a Star Wars EST in-game session with custom alien female who was topless and had mind control sex drugs in a tail stinger. <laughs> Said no way, bitching in shoes for hours. Turns out he cut his teeth in RPG playing GURPS and his first player group were all backstabbing assholes. Claims he doesn't know how to play a game based on mutually helping each other. Attacks me once in my own home because he was bored and wanted to assert dominance. Best day of that year was calling the police and him disappearing from all local gaming after that. Would you believe it if someone tried to assert dominance on you in your own home and you didn't break their fucking teeth? Jesus. Ugh, I'm going to assert dominance. And you just fucking just crack his jaw open like a goddamn pottery Ugh, oh, jeez. Worst player I ever had was a guy that would also make his characters chaotic neutral, red flag, and then just do random stupid shit in the game that would either A, have his character die in a stupid manner, or B, piss off the other players so much they would kick the character from the group. After about six sessions of this bullshit, I smote his character and banned him from the table. In six sessions, he went through nine characters. That's how absurd it was. You always hear that fucking chicken? Bitching about a game five years ago in fucking high school. A absolutely pathetic. You bring shame to Pepe with your post. In my group, we were trying to... Yeah, him... We are trying to yeah him how to be a person by every time he does a DMPC we tell him no anon. Getting robbed of the glory in the challenge by an NPC is fucking gay. We play two campaigns every week. It's not like you never play your characters. But he gets visibly sad. We do this because every time we let him have his way with DMPCs, they become more important to the plot than us. DMPCs are fucking gay. <laughs> Be me. Just got a new temp job. Start hanging out with that guy. Seems okay. He's a neat who gets temp jobs to keep his parents off his back. Red flag. Later he learns IGM D&D. Wants me to run a game for him, his girlfriend, and a couple of friends. Didn't have anyone to play with, so I agree. Little backstory. In my lore, the God of War has a champion. If you were his champion, you got a sweet magical sword and armor. Anyone could challenge him for the title at any time, and he had to accept the challenge. However, it was a fight to the death, no exceptions. That guy's character was a fighter whose goal was to become the champion. 
Players start at level 1 because everyone is new to the game. Eventually they get to level 3. That guy announces he's going to challenge the God of War's champion. I tell him he'll get killed. He says, don't worry, I've got a plan. His plan was to run up and hit him with the sword. <laughs> he gets killed fairly quickly. Don't worry, I have a plan. Gets hit by a truck. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him if he wanted to play a new character, he could have just asked. He swears he didn't do it on purpose, and he really wants to keep playing. Tell him to be ready next week with a new character. Next week I ask him <laughs> next week I ask him if he's made a new character. He says no. Okay, so let's roll up your new character so we can start. Well, you see, I've gotta think about my character. Uh what? I've got to roleplay out every conversation my character could possibly ever have and how he would respond. Is this real life? Gif. So how long will it take? He thinks for a second. About three or four months. Three to four months on a 5e D&D character. Rest of his friends want to wait on him. Leave and go make less autistic friends. He messaged me a few times a week for a couple months telling me the progress of his character. What the fuck? I've got a couple more. Be me. At local game store with new, less autistic friends. Gonna run Horde of the Dragon Queen for some new players. New that guy wants to play. Ask him if he's looked at the PHB and what he wants to play. Well, oh boy, here we go. I really don't like any of the races in the player handbook, and I'm really creative, so I made my own. He hands me a sheet. Character is Son of Cthulhu Warlock, described as a three foot tall humanoid covered in tentacles. All spells are homebrew as well. Tell him no and to stick to the damn player handbook. Spends a half hour trying to convince me I'm stifling his creativity by not letting him play this. Firmly tell him no. Player handbook or nothing. He gets mad and sulks away. He ends up playing with the local group of that guys. <laughs> they all only play homebrew races and classes. Some highlights include a winged minotaur, a two headed gorilla, the son of Cthulhu, half kitsune, half neko barbarian. You just know that last guy with the Kitsune Barbarian just smells like smegma and fucking sadness. How come every time someone wants to play a non-standard race it's always either munchkin shit or fetish shit? I've never encountered one who just had a character concept with a reasonable sounding homebrew race. The closest thing is one of my current players playing an Aarakocra but that's official Wizarsa content and not even that weird. That sounds okay to me. Is it not a problem if everyone is this in it for the silliness? Two-headed gorilla sounds pretty Kino, Dezu. Was it like one facing forward, one backwards, side to side, or, st or stacked? <laughs> stacked. Imagine playing a role-playing game and not letting people role-play because of mo rules. Be me. Be GM running post-apocalypse setting Pathfinder. All of creation, save for this last world, is gone. The surface of the world is a radioactive wasteland illuminated by cosmic beings of light feasting on the last piece of reality. Two players both granted carte... Carte... Carte Blanche? Oh fuck, I'm gonna make up in the comments for this one. Carte Blanche to make whatever character they please. It's them against the end of all things, so I'm being very lenient on what they can do. Player one is a cleric of Seren... Serenre and is Seren Ray herself, having lost a final battle and been reincarnated into an Azimer. Player 2 is a paladin trained by the remnants of the angelic hosts and sworn to end the existence of any undead he encounters to protect the souls of the departed from the forces of entropy. Player 1 is into the game like an addict from onset. Player 2 endlessly makes passive-aggressive remarks every time he turns out to be incorrect about something or can't figure out what to do next. Player 1 tries to be helpful and encouraging, but his successes only aggravate and discourage Player 2 more. Start giving Player 2 boons from the remnants of Gods of Death, and he eventually discovers that the dead are following him in the form of silvery chains. Player 1 gradually regains lost memories and collects Sanrei related artifacts to reconstitute some of her power. Player 2 makes no effort to use his abilities, let alone experiment with them. 
Player one goes wild trying everything and anything to reinstate herself as an actual deity or at least a demigod. New player joins up. Player two makes lots of passive aggressive warnings to new people about how hopeless everything is and how they're utterly lost. Player one disagrees and calls two a quitter. New players catch on to the plot and figures out what to do through meta and clues. Halfway through the game, despite talking to player 2 repeatedly about the game and the issues we both have, he keeps being passive aggressive and refuses to acknowledge any chance of success for the party. I gradually lose interest due to the constant bitching. Wrap up the game quickly to provide a conclusion. Players thank me for running the game. Player 2 rolls his eyes while I give the ending exposition of the game. From that point on, he continues to be a passive-aggressive dick to anyone running a game that doesn't let him get away with whatever he wanted to do or disagrees with him. When he runs games, he gets really autistic about morality and protective towards certain NPCs. He moved away for work and I couldn't be happier that he's gone. We were friends before all this, but since that game, I couldn't see him as anything other than an entitled prick. My GM all through college and for some years after, until I had to move states for a job, did the same always has a DMPC thing, with one additional flaw. They were almost always some character from a comic book or movie. Not, oh he's very inspired by X, no. Motherfucking Gabriel, looking like Christopher Walken, with all of his powers from all three prophecy movies shows up, or Wolverine, or whatever. And if one of those characters has powers that don't exist, he'd stat them out himself, trying to be accurate, which often meant that they all had at least one straight I win button. Otherwise, great DM. But oh my god, his constant dragging in of comic book, movie slash YA novel characters made me want to scream until I choked. That feel when worried that I might have been that guy with the only other party I've played with besides my core group, it is, it is not a good feeling. Me and a few friends start playing Pathfinder on Tabletop Simulator. We play a silly and short zombie campaign that's supposed to end in a party wipe, just to get used to TTS and see if you like it over Roll20. Friend adds friend of a friend into the group because he's been having trouble finding a group. Cool. It'd be nice to have another person. Neglect to tell him it's supposed to end in a party wipe. Tell him, yeah, just make a simple character or like a human fighter or something. It's just a test run to see if you like it or not complies. Going good so far. We get playing and we realize that the DM made the hallways too thin, but it's still possible to work with. Not a big deal. He starts unlocking and trying to build new hallways in the middle of the game. Dude, what the fuck are you doing? Stop that JPEG. Gets mad that we told him to stop. Keep going for a few hours and get to the end of the campaign. Entire time, he won't shut the fuck up about the shitty map that was made in like an hour and apparently unfair rolls he's getting. Even though the DM is blatantly fudging rolls so he doesn't die because he charges into places and doesn't look for traps. Get to final boss. He gets smacked and ends up unconscious. Actually yelling into his mic causing it to clip out how unfair it was. DM kicks him from the game. Sends the friend that invited him a long ass message about how we're a bunch of fucking assholes. And we didn't like him because he wasn't in the friend group originally. He just sent back, yeah, I think this is why you can't find a group. Don't fucking message me about this again. <laughs> Last seen on Steam three months ago. Our forever GM is a pretty good GM. So in order to play, he brought his uncle in, who he said, taught him everything he knows about RPGs. Little did I know that he was that GM. Play the Halo fan-made RPG since forever GM loves Halo. Decide to mix it up for my usual combat-focused characters and build an AI to function as a bridge between GM and players. Almost completely support role due to being unable to take physical action, but with a bit of Hannibal Lecter thrown in. <laughs> what? Forever GM plays a Spartan that carries me around. Investigate abandoned ship with AI that's gone, that's gone rouge. 
<laughs> that's, that's gone rogue. Really cool plot hook. Rouge. <laughs> rogue, man. It's rogue. Rogue AI turns out to be horror movie cliche number 362. Creepy little girl who has a demon friend and wants to play with you. It gets apparent that I won't be hacking anything anytime soon. Since the Rouge AI, I just keep picturing this AI or ship with like these bright red cheeks and a fuck. <laughs> Sir, they've gone Rouge. My god, they're fucking gorgeous. <laughs> Since the Rogue AI went Super Saiyan. Blows me out of the water when I crit my hacking checks. My orders of magnitude that should not be possible in the rules. Almost gets my consciousness fried. Well, fuck. So I won't be able to supply my team with any useful information or waypoints, but I might still be able to open doors and shit. Be useful somehow. Find a sole survivor NPC in a cryopod and rescue her. Luckily she knows where to go and how to get there. Door to progress locked. Try to hack it. You can't hack that door, Anon. It's protected. NPC immediately proceeds to hack the door open. Exact same thing happens on any locked door from then on. I can't hack anything to help the party or provide information. Can't take any physical action since I am an AI hologram. Be completely useless and bored for the entire five hours. Quit the campaign after the session and it fell apart. Now Forever GM is back to Forever GMing. Why in the world would a GM go out of his way to just flat out disable the entire character and replace it with an NPC that fills the exact same roles? I have no idea how our forever GM became this good with that guy as his mentor, but thank god. And I, I gotta agree, that's pretty shitty. Like, hey Anon, this door's protected. Has NPC hacked a door? B bitch! <laughs> And now, some words of wisdom from Shakespearean Monkey. If you're worried about being that guy, then you're probably not that guy. Keep being reflective and checking your attitude and actions, and talk frankly with your fellow players and DM about your behavior. People generally prefer to talk about themselves, but with some gentle prodding you can usually get honest takes from your friends. Thank you, Shakespearean Monkey. Thank you. And that's the end of this video. If you like this video and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia. And be sure to click the bell icon so you know when the videos are released through the week. And if you like original stories been written out through the week, fresh off the presses of original content, be sure to stop by Guardbeardia, where I live, and check out the Veil vale Rider series and the Chronicles of Emily Bronze. But until I see you next time on this side of the Veil, vale, this has been Guard Bro.